Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, why was cocaine in the White House and how did it get there? That's what the Secret Service is trying to find out, and some lawmakers have some questions of their own. What's behind the surge in people dropping dead unexpectedly in the last couple of years? We're going to hear from one author who believes there's a link to COVID vaccines. China still exerting its naval power in the South China Sea and caught in the crosshairs innocent Filipino fishermen. And the movie we've been telling you about, Sound of Freedom, about rescuing children from sex trafficking, has a smash debut, number one at the box office. All those stories and more today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. We begin this half hour in Washington with cocaine in the White House. The Secret Service confirms a tiny bag of the white powder was found in the West Wing over the weekend. Agents are now on the hunt for who left it there, and lawmakers have some questions of their own. Here's CBN's George Thomas. Secret Service agents are now poring over visitors' logs and surveillance camera video to identify who brought a pouch of cocaine to the west wing of the White House. Where this was discovered uh, is a heavily traveled area. Law enforcement officials said the cocaine was discovered in an area where visitors who are not accredited to visit the White House on a regular basis place phones and other personal belongings before going on tours of the facility. We do have uh, West Wing tours that, that occur here uh, on campus. Uh, they happen in this particular past uh, couple of days. They happen on Friday, they happen on Saturday uh, and Sunday. We have, a result. we have a yellow bar stating cocaine, hydrochloride. The powder was found in a small clear plastic bag Sunday evening during a routine sweep of the West Wing, which sits adjacent to the private residence of the president and close to the Oval Office. Officials are combing through security footage. They're looking at um, who might have dropped this unintentionally or how it ended up in the White House in the first place. Both the president and first lady, including son Hunter and other family members, left Friday for Fourth of July celebrations and were not on the grounds when the substance was found. Authorities had to briefly shut down the White House. One law enforcement official telling Politico that it's unlikely we'll know who brought the cocaine to the White House, given that it was found in a highly frequented area of the West Wing. We have confidence that the Secret Service is going to get to the bottom of this. During a meeting with Sweden's Prime Minister, President Biden was pressed on how the cocaine got into the White House, but didn't respond. Republican Senator Tom Cotton, though, wants answers. He wrote a letter to the Secret Service asking how the cocaine managed to slip past authorities. If the White House complex is not secure, Congress needs to know the details, as well as your plan to correct any security flaws, the senator wrote in a two-page letter. The Arkansas senator also wants to know how many times illegal drugs were found at the White House in the last five years. George Thomas, CBN News. Here's a quick look now at some other important stories in the news. The British Parliament has approved a bill that prevents government bodies from boycotting Israel. Michael Cove, the official who advanced the bill, said it was aimed at fighting the BDS movement, which stands for Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Against Israel. Drinking from nearly half of U.S. faucets likely contains forever chemicals that may cause cancer and other health problems. That is the finding from a government study released Wednesday. The synthetic compounds known collectively as PFAS are contaminating drinking water to varying extents in large cities and small towns and in private wells and public systems. And the tipping culture may have reached a tipping point. 30% of Americans believe the practice of and prompts for tipping have gotten out of control. That is according to a new survey from Bankrate. Coming up, a national discussion about questions over the COVID vaccines are back in the headlines after a federal judge's ruling that the Biden administration probably violated the First Amendment by shutting down viewpoints that disagreed with official explanations. And we're going to hear from one author who raised his own questions about the link between the surprising increase in sudden deaths and the vaccine. We've got the story when we come back. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. 
Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Sudden death among healthy working age people worldwide is skyrocketing. Here in America, it was up 40 percent during the third and fourth quarters of 2021. Edward Dowd is the author of the book, Cause Unknown, the Epidemic of Sudden Deaths in 2021 and 2022. He contends a 10% jump would have been a one in 200 year event, but the 2021 jump was 40%. Might COVID-19 have skewed the numbers or was it something else? Here's a look at Gary Lane's interview. It was mostly old folks who died of COVID with comorbidities. Then there was a sudden mix shift in 2021 and 22 and continues in 23. And my uh, work and my partner's work points to something that happened with the employed of our country. It's been detrimental to your health to be employed in 21 and 22. And we examined this, the Society of Actuaries, which is an industry group for insurers that does surveys in August of 22. They came out with a survey uh, for their group life policyholders, and group life is a specific policy for those who onboard to Fortune 500 or mid-sized companies. You get this uh, death benefit as kind of a freebie when you onboard, and you you know you get one or two extra salary. Should you die, you get that. Your family gets that, or your beneficiary. You have to be employed at the time you get it. Well, this is a great business for insurance companies, and in 2021. The whole industry experienced 40% excess death in uh, ages 25 through 64. The millennials 25 through 44 were, were hard hit, particularly. The group life policyholders generally die at one third the rate of the general US population in any given year. And in 2021, I just said they, they had 40% excess death. Um, the general US population had 32% excess death. Well, it seems and, like, uh, tell us about some of these unexpected sudden deaths. It seems like there are a lot of them. I mean, just from a Google search, you can find like a lot of 12, 14, 16, 18 year olds that are just dropping dead suddenly. Tell us more. Right, right. And in my book, I talk about sudden death and we look at the sudden deaths of athletes, which, you know, did it happen before 21? It did. There was a study in 2006 by the Lausanne Institute in Switzerland that showed over the course of 38 years, they found 1,101 sudden athletic deaths, which is about 29 a year globally. We'd be lucky to have a month with just 29 since, uh, uh, since 2021. In my book alone, there's hundreds and hundreds of examples. So something's changed. I obviously blame the vaccine because that's what's changed and mandates. And um, you know, my, the naysayers will tell me it's COVID, long COVID. Well, um, if that's the case, uh, why did it uh, not affect the young in 2020? And so we have a health problem, a national health crisis, and at the very least, it should be examined and discussed openly. Unfortunately, the vaccine is a taboo subject, and uh, it's not allowed to be discussed in the mainstream media or pretty much anywhere near health authorities. So this is a problem that needs to be reckon with. We need a national discussion about it. And, I, you know, if I'm proven wrong, that's great. But unfortunately, uh, on Wall Street, when we see statistics like this, um, we, we, we and, and trend changes like this, uh, we become quite alarmed. And that's yeah. what I do for a living. Yeah, it, it gets your attention. And I want to remind people that you're not a medical doctor, but you've done a lot of research on this for your book. So what did medical professionals speculate is the probable cause of all these sudden deaths? Do they agree with you? Uh, well, it depends uh, on, 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 on where you fall down on the issue. The, obviously, the frontline doctors who were vilified early on, who um, identified the vaccine issues like Peter McCullough, Dr. Malone, and others agree with me. Um, the excuses I've heard from many medical professionals is, well, there's suicides, Ed. There's um, uh, drug and fentanyl overdoses and missed cancer screening appointments. Well, let's take a look at what happened in the third quarter of 2021. The millennial group, in the, uh, according to the Society of Actuaries, that's ages 25 through 44, experienced into the third quarter a rise from about 30 percent excess mortality uh, to 84 percent. Very sudden, uh, rapid change. So I call that an event. I call that the mandate event in, in, in the fall of 2021. 
And to say that uh, Fortune 500 and mid-sized uh, company employees had a suicide pact doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, to keep to, to get your claim, you have to keep your job. Uh, fentanyl users and heroin, heroin users don't stay employed very long, and it's also suspicious they decided to overdose in the same quarter. And then the missed cancer screening appointments doesn't make any sense. I'm 56, never had one. Uh, it's something that young folks don't tend to do. So this is, um, and for all three to have occurred simultaneously is, is, is nearly impossible. So there is an event that occurred in 2021. If the doctors can explain that to me, we had already gone from the original Wuhan uh, uh, variant to Delta, and Delta didn't seem to do this damage in the summer, and Delta was all over the place in the summer. So somebody needs to investigate this. I have my definitive conclusion in my estimation it's the vaccine. I'll, you know, I'll be proven wrong until, I, and right now I don't have anybody coming up with an excuse that makes any sense to me or anybody else, quite frankly. Okay, the book is Cause Unknown, the Epidemic of Sudden Deaths in 2021 and 2022. Edward Dodd, thank you for sharing those insights. We appreciate it. Still ahead, bump them, ram them, sink them, and then leave them. That's what China's maritime militia is doing to Philippine fishermen. We'll show you how the Asia superpower is aggressively trying to dominate the South China Sea right after this. China is continuing to assert its dominance in the South China Sea. Over the last 10 years, Beijing has deployed significant military assets to intimidate any country challenging its key international shipping lane. Fishermen whose livelihoods depend on the waterway are caught in the crosshairs of China's aggressive tactics. Here again now is George Thomas, who traveled to the coast of Manila to show us their struggle firsthand. time with J.C. Cabanillas on the water, and you'll soon discover what puts a smile on his face. I feel the happiest when I'm at sea. This is the kind of job where you don't have a boss. It's based on your decision whether you'll go to sea or not. Three generations of Cabanillas' family have fished these waters here off the Philippine coast. That livelihood now faces an increasing threat from China. Every time Filipino fishermen go to the West Philippine Sea, they will be greeted by Chinese Coast Guard and Chinese fishermen. No matter how far they are, they will be reminded that you have entered Chinese territory, so you have to leave. Fernando Haikup runs the nation's largest fishing federation, some 80,000 members. He says that China's claim to South China Sea, including the West Philippine Sea, puts fishermen like Cabanillas on the front lines of a possible military confrontation with Beijing. Before the occupation of the Chinese government in the West Philippine Sea and larger South China Sea, there used to be a fishing ground for all fishermen from different countries, Malaysians, Indonesians, Vietnamese, Taiwanese and Chinese. During that time, there were no stories of fights or rivalry between the fishermen. But now, the Chinese presence is so destructive. The Philippine government warned world leaders at the recent Munich Security Conference that China's harassment of Filipino fishermen and the country's Coast Guard is now a daily occurrence. It's clear to us what China wants. They want to occupy the West Philippine Sea and the whole South China Sea. A Chinese Coast Guard ship hit a Philippine Coast Guard vessel last month with a military-grade laser, temporarily blinding some of the crew aboard the Philippine vessel. Several Filipino fishermen were also targeted and forced to move away from the area. The Philippine government lodged more than 200 protests against Chinese intimidation and harassment in 2022 alone. JC here has been fishing these waters off the coast of the Philippines for more than 35 years. And today, so many of his colleagues who fish these same waters are urging the Filipino government to do more to challenge the Chinese. 
To avoid direct military confrontation and still maintain a high level of intimidation, the Chinese government has deployed a maritime militia, mostly made up of commercial Chinese fishermen, to prowl these waters. They are trained uh, by the PLA Navy and their uh, wages are funded by the PLA Navy. Retired Navy Captain Carl Schuster, a former director of operations at the U.S. Pacific Command's Joint Intelligence Center, says the militia has hundreds of commercial boats and thousands of crew members at their disposal. The advantage of using uh, the maritime militia is uh, ostensibly they are commercial craft. Uh, you, if you check the ownership papers, they go back to a commercial entity somewhere, and that gives the Chinese government plausible deniability. In 2021, more than 200 Chinese fishing boats converged on the Whitsun Reef, an area under Philippine control in the South China Sea. Their basic tactics is to intimidate local fishermen into leaving the area so that China gains control of the waters by default. The militia, dubbed as China's Little Blue Men because of the blue-painted color of their vessels, are trained to carry out offensive maneuvers especially around disputed territories. It's called gray zone operations. They stop short of committing an act of war, uh, but they will use their water cannon uh, on local fishing boats. They'll bump them, ram them, sink them, and then leave them. Experts say China's hybrid warfare here is similar to how Moscow deployed its Russian little green men to infiltrate and take over Crimea in 2014. And in theory, they could do even more than that if they ever wanted to launch an attack. They could even use some fishing boats clandestinely or surreptitiously to carry weapons or carry soldiers. It's one big reason why the Philippines and neighboring countries are reluctant to openly challenge the Chinese on the high seas. When they come up on one of these craft violating local rules, are they approaching a purely commercial craft or are they approaching an armed ship? Nations, particularly in Southeast Asia, where China is much more powerful than they are, they're very wary of interfering with any Chinese commercial fishing activity for fear of what they might actually be encountering. Back on his boat, J.C. Cabanayas is thrilled that the United States and the Philippines are strengthening their military ties. Both countries are set to resume joint patrols of the South China Sea. We Filipinos need to stay strong as well, so that the Chinese will see we're not scared of them. The more we look intimidated, the more they want to occupy us. George Thomas, CBN News, Manila. Coming up, it's an important film we've been telling you about for the last few weeks, and now it's number one at the box office. We're going to have a look at The Sound of Freedom. When we come back, stay with us. Introducing a brand new way to start your morning. Get your daily quick start from CBN News. A quick read on the important news of the day delivered right to your inbox. Stay current on breaking news, politics, and entertainment. Discover how God is moving around the world and here at home. Plus, get exclusive stories and daily scripture encouragement just for you. Stay informed. Go to quickstart.news and subscribe today. The Sound of Freedom, a faith-based thriller from Angel Studios, is now the top film in the country. The film had a smash opening on the 4th of July, coming in at number one, pulling in $14 million at the box office. The movie stars Jim Caviezel and tells the story of a former Homeland Security agent, Tim Ballard, on a mission to free hundreds of children from sex traffickers. Here's a look at the trailer. I don't think I can do this job, Tim. As soon as I lay down, all these see are those kids' faces. How long have you been doing this? 12 years. How do you do it? It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Do you know what 
hijo rescata niños, ¿verdad? Quizá puedas ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What will we do? Shivering stars drift around in the sky. We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing kids in Colombia. I like all this job tears you to pieces. This is my one chance to put those pieces back together. We're talking about extracting an 11-year-old girl from an army of rebels. Not just her. I'm talking about rescuing hundreds of kids. She could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, LA. Over two million children a year are being sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. If we do nothing, someday it's gonna reach the likes of you. What if this was your daughter? Analysts believe the film will keep going strong and could hit $20 million by the end of the week. And the story continues. They had the opportunity to interview Tim Ballard, who the film is based on. So far, his organization has helped to free some 6,000 children. Time now for your Thursday Thankful. And today I want to leave you with this thought, with this prayer of gratitude. God, thank you for the gifts of faith, family, and freedom. We can't earn them, but we must cherish them forever make us mindful of their benefits and to that prayer. May we all say amen and amen. Well, that will do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us at that address right there on your screen, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Make it a Thursday filled with gratitude. We'll see you back here tomorrow.